Chapter One of Doctor Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Doctor Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. Brushtail the Fox comes to the big green woods dr rabbit and cheepy chipmunk were sitting in dr rabbit's front yard talking they laughed a good deal as they talked for it was a lovely morning in the beautiful big green woods and every one felt happy finally jolly dr rabbit said he believed he would run over to the big sycamore tree to eat some more of the tender blue grass that grew there it seemed as if he could eat there all day and all night he said because that grass was so good cheepy chipmunk said he was getting hungry again too and he guessed he would be going home to eat the fresh ear of corn he had found that morning cheepy chipmunk got up and was starting away when dr rabbit seized him and said in a low frightened whisper that scared cheepy half to death come back and sit down and keep as still as anything look out there will you very badly startled cheepy chipmunk came back and sat down and his eyes followed dr rabbit's eyes cheepy saw an animal such as he had never seen before this animal looked somewhat like a dog but cheepy knew right away he was no dog he was not quite so large as kai coyote and was of a reddish brown color with a large bushy tail the animal was walking along under the trees not far away and did not even look in the direction of dr rabbit and little cheepy chipmunk but although he could not tell why cheepy knew at once that the reddish-brown animal walking along out there under the trees was very dangerous to chipmunks and rabbits and any number of other little animals yes sir cheepy chipmunk was dreadfully frightened at once for he was certain his life and the lives of stubby woodchuck chatty red squirrel and all his other friends were in great danger but he had never seen such an animal before so of course he did not know what it was while dr rabbit and cheepy chipmunk looked the strange animal walked along just as if he were not interested in anything he did not even look toward dr rabbit and cheepy chipmunk this fooled innocent cheepy and he whispered to dr rabbit he has not seen us let's slip into your house i don't want him to catch sight of us keep right still dr rabbit whispered in reply just sit still yes he has seen us don't you fool yourself about that but he knows well enough he can't catch us now he's made up his mind he'll wait until he gets a better chance but we won't let him know we see him 
we'll have to try to deceive him at every turn yes sir cheepy we've got to watch out every minute now we certainly have he's one of the most cunning animals there is i'm sorry he's come into our woods cheepy chipmunk was so frightened that his teeth were chattering as he asked who is he he's brushtail the fox dr rabbit said i saw him a number of times in the woods up along the deep river where i used to live we'll see more of him we can count on that and now friend cheepy you must stay right here at my house until we are sure brushtail has stopped watching us out of the corner of his eye end of chapter one chapter two of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain chatty red squirrel is heard scolding loudly dr rabbit was right brushtail the fox had seen exactly who was in dr rabbit's front yard but he did not act as if he knew there was anyone within a mile of him no he just kept right on walking slowly under the trees and then all of a sudden chatty red squirrel almost made him look up chatty was high up in a big hackberry tree and from this safe perch he scolded brushtail as loudly as he could get out of these woods chatty squirrel shouted angrily you have no right in here you are just sneaking around to catch somebody but you can't i won't let you i'll tell on you look here everybody here is old brushtail the fox i know you mr brushtail i've seen you before in the woods up along the deep river look out everybody brushtail is around he's right under this tree right this minute i can see him look out for mr brushtail here he is well dr rabbit and cheepy chipmunk watched and listened while chatty squirrel scolded brushtail the fox so loudly but brushtail paid no attention whatever to chatty the fact was that he did hear every word chatty squirrel said and he was pretty angry about it too because you see he did not want all the little creatures of the big green woods to know he was around he wanted to get one or two of them for breakfast before they even dreamed he was anywhere near but even if he was angry brushtail knew of course that he could not climb that tree after chatty squirrel so he just ground his teeth and walked on he decided that he would make chatty pay for this indeed he would he would catch him the very first of all and so as dr rabbit and cheepy chipmunk looked and listened brushtail without saying a word walked on and finally slipped out of sight among some leafy bushes i'm going home this minute cheepy chipmunk exclaimed his voice trembling with fear 
and away he went for his stump as fast as he could run after cheepy had gone dr rabbit said to himself well i do declare so brushtail the fox has found the big green woods and likely enough intends to live here if he does we'll certainly all have to watch out every minute indeed we will i'm glad chatty squirrel is scolding so loudly perhaps our friends will all hear and be on the lookout chatty squirrel who had followed along in the branches of the trees and kept sight of slinky brushtail was now heard quite a distance away scolding louder than ever i wonder what chatty is scolding about out there now dr rabbit said it sounds as if he were still talking to brushtail perhaps brushtail has stopped out there and possibly he has caught something and is eating it i'm going to slip out that way and see i'll take the path that leads past several briar patches and if mr fox runs for me i'll just slip into a briar patch if he tries to follow me in there he knows what he'll get he'll get his eyes scratched out with the briars my how chatty is scolding he's scolding brushtail too brushtail must be doing something unusual or chatty would not talk so excitedly End of chapter two chapter three of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain brushtail the fox plays possum dr rabbit hurried away from his home toward the place where he heard chatty squirrel scolding brushtail the fox dr rabbit to tell the truth was afraid to venture out there so close to brushtail but then he reasoned he would have to go sooner or later and get something to eat so he might as well venture out now and see what the old villain was doing dr rabbit kept in the path that led past several briar patches and this made him feel pretty safe the nearer dr rabbit came to the place where chatty squirrel was scolding the louder sounded chatty's angry voice dr rabbit crept close and slipped into a briar patch no more than twenty feet away lying on the ground as still as if he were dead was brushtail the fox but he did not fool dr rabbit in the least dr rabbit knew instantly what brushtail wanted he wanted chatty squirrel because brushtail lay so still and paid not the least attention to his scolding chatty squirrel became really puzzled he stopped scolding and said to himself now i wonder if that old scamp is dead he certainly lies there very still anyway i believe i'll just slip down on the ground for a minute and see if he's just playing dead he'll come after me when i get on the ground then i'll know for sure and i'll go back up the tree in a hurry chatty squirrel scrambled down the tree and as soon as he reached the ground he began scolding brushtail the fox he thought of course that this would make brushtail jump up if he were only playing dead 
but Brushtail paid no attention to Chatty. He lay as still as a dead fox. Chatty Squirrel ran a little way toward him, but was afraid to venture far. Just then he happened to see Dr. Rabbit hiding under the briar patch, motioning for him to come over and looking as though he knew something very funny there happened to be another tree by the briar patch so chatty squirrel sprang right over to see what dr rabbit wanted dr rabbit whispered something in chatty's ear and then they chuckled softly to themselves the more chatty thought about what dr rabbit had said the more he laughed not very loudly of course because he did not want brushtail the fox to hear hurry along now before he gets up dr rabbit whispered and away ran chatty squirrel back to the tree he had left chatty scrambled back up the tree in a hurry and began scolding brushtail louder than ever he did not say a word about dr rabbit of course he just went right on scolding as if nothing had happened now brushtail the fox was not dead and as he lay there very still he thought every minute chatty squirrel's curiosity would get the better of him and chatty would come down the tree and close enough so that he could pounce upon him but chatty did just exactly what dr rabbit had told him to do i wish he said aloud that i knew whether mr fox is really dead he lies so still i believe he is and if he lies there much longer i shall have to go down and see yes i'll have to go down and poke him and see brushtail the fox could scarcely keep from smacking his lips when chatty said this but he did not move of course he lay perfectly still not even winking an eye for he was very hungry and he hoped chatty squirrel would decide to hurry and come down and all the time that chatty squirrel up in the tree was scolding dr rabbit was working at something in the nearby thicket chatty you see was going to keep brushtail's attention until dr rabbit played a good joke on old brushtail end of chapter three chapter four of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain brushtail gets a scare now this was what dr rabbit was doing in the nearby thicket he gathered some moss and rolled it into a big ball then he took a bottle of medicine from his medicine case the bottle had ammonia in it spirits of ammonia it was and dr rabbit poured the medicine all over and through the big ball of moss my but that ammonia smelled strong i should say it did smell strong it was so strong in fact that dr rabbit had to turn his head partly away from the moss while he poured the medicine on it now dr rabbit had to be very very careful he picked up the ball of moss in his front 
paws and walked toward brushtail the fox who lay on the ground with his eyes shut tight chatty squirrel kept up a very loud scolding as dr rabbit slipped up to brushtail then when he was very near dr rabbit threw that moss with all the terribly strong ammonia right on brushtail's head and over his nose brushtail got such a big whiff of the medicine that he almost strangled my how he did jump and yell he was terribly scared because he did not know for a minute what had happened then he heard chatty up on the limb laughing and shouting for joy dr rabbit ran back to the edge of the thicket and he was laughing too it certainly did look funny to see brushtail the fox standing and staring at that moss as if he thought it was something alive when brushtail saw that a joke had been played on him he was terribly angry he knew of course he could not get chatty so he made a rush for dr rabbit but dr rabbit skipped into the thicket picked up his medicine case and shouted good day mr fox i guess you won't have chatty for breakfast you'd better eat the moss ball and away dr rabbit ran in a twinkling he was out of sight in the leafy woods brushtail the fox ran after dr rabbit as fast as he could go but it was no use he could not find him now it happened that dr rabbit had not gone far at all he was not far from home so he just hid behind a big log and he was watching brushtail the fox all the time after a time brushtail sat down and kept still his sharp eyes however were looking in every direction he thought he might see dr rabbit by keeping quiet and looking about him dr rabbit as i have said was so close to his home that he knew he was safe so he walked quietly from behind the log holding his medicine case and acting just as though he did not know that brushtail the fox was anywhere about brushtail quickly lay down and was as quiet as possible then dr rabbit stopped looked back and said pleasantly it's a nice morning brushy that surely surprised brushtail but when he saw dr rabbit's home tree not far away he knew he could not catch him so he smiled and said i've just been playing with you all the time do come on over to my home neighbor rabbit i have something very fine there to show you we'll have some good times together ha 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 wise dr rabbit laughed as he started toward his big tree yes he continued i suppose you have some very cruel teeth to show me mr brushtail but i can see them quite as well as i care to ha 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 and dr rabbit ran for his tree brushtail ran after him too but dr rabbit ran fast and reached his home in safety there he peeked out and saw brushtail steal into some bushes End of chapter four Chapter Five of Doctor Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain.
Dr. Rabbit sees something interesting. Now when Dr. Rabbit ran into the big hollow tree that was his home, Brushtail the fox slunk into some leafy bushes nearby and lay down without making a sound. I'll just wait here, Brushtail whispered to himself, and that smart old rabbit will be coming out pretty soon. He won't know that I'm anywhere about but old brushtail was very much mistaken for dr rabbit had peeked out of his front door as soon as he was inside his house and you remember he saw brushtail steal into the bushes no sir he wasn't about to be fooled this time for a long time brushtail lay in the bushes he lay so quietly that not a leaf on the branches about him stirred his glittering eyes were turned toward dr rabbit's tree and every little while he showed his long sharp teeth as he smiled at the thought of the good meal that big fat rabbit would make but all the while dr rabbit watched from an upstairs window where brushtail could not see him although dr rabbit could plainly see the pointed nose and sharp gleaming eyes of his enemy presently dr rabbit heard the rustle of leaves and the gay chatter 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 of chatty red squirrel as he bounded into the branches of a tree overlooking the bushes that hid brushtail dr rabbit drew a long breath of relief he wasn't afraid of brushtail the fox when he was safe in his big hollow tree oh no you mustn't think that not for a moment but you see dr rabbit was getting pretty tired and stiff from watching so cautiously from his upstairs window and yet he couldn't quite bring himself to the point of going downstairs and forgetting brushtail no indeed he couldn't quite do that so dr rabbit was glad to see chatty red squirrel for he knew just what would happen and sure enough in a few minutes chatty squirrel saw brushtail lying low in the bushes and then how he did scold aha old brushtail i see you hiding in the bushes thought i wouldn't see you didn't you thought i wouldn't see you but i see you all right you can't fool chatty no siree oh i know you're looking for dr rabbit and chatty's tone became angrier at the thought of brushtail waiting to pounce upon his good friend dr rabbit you're just waiting for dr rabbit to come home and then spring out at him get out of here get out get out of here screamed chatty brushtail the fox was angry well i should say he was he knew that dr rabbit would hear chatty red squirrels scolding and would know that he was hiding ready to eat him if he came out of the tree brushtail was so angry that he snarled but he slunk away through the bushes without saying a word to chatty red brushtail is wise enough to know that there is no use arguing with chatty squirrel for chatty is altogether too noisy a talker i should say he is when brushtail slunk away through the bushes dr rabbit called to chatty red squirrel but chatty did not hear him he had scampered away to another tree still talking loudly 
then dr rabbit turned quickly and leaned out of his window to watch brushtail the fox brushtail was trotting off through the big green woods in a direction in which dr rabbit seldom went and dr rabbit noticed that he seemed to be afraid someone would see him he looked on each side of him as he went along and every now and then he took a big jump sidewise dr rabbit was certainly interested now for he believed brushtail the fox was going to hide somewhere probably he was going to hide in a place where he hid every day yes sir brushtail certainly was cautious now and he must have jumped to one side as many as five times while dr rabbit was watching him then in a little while he reached a part of the woods where the brush and leaves were so thick that dr rabbit could just barely see him as he slipped along End of chapter five Chapter Six of Doctor Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Two hunters come to the big green woods. When Brushtail the Fox slipped into the place where there were so many leafy bushes it was very hard for dr rabbit to see him from his big tree sometimes he lost sight of brushtail altogether and then for an instant he would see his long sharp nose or his reddish-brown coat or his big bushy tail and all the time brushtail became more and more cautious he moved so slowly and so quietly among the bushes that dr rabbit had to strain his eyes to see him then suddenly brushtail jumped high up onto the dead limb of a big fallen tree he walked out on this limb then jumped far out into a dense thicket and disappeared yes sir brushtail the fox was gone dr rabbit stood by his window in the tree and looked and looked he thought he would presently see a sharp nose or a bushy tail but he did not brushtail was hiding somewhere in that thicket well 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 dr rabbit exclaimed i certainly should like to know what old brushtail is doing in there i am positive he is in that thicket he never could have slipped out without my seeing him yes sir he's in there and that's probably where he always hides likely enough he has a den in there i shouldn't be surprised if there are a lot of rocks in there and brushtail the fox has a big hole away back under them well dr rabbit continued talking softly to himself i'm going to slip out there as near as possible and keep watch and see if i can discover anything more about brushtail i must not tell anyone as yet what i have seen no if i want to get a lot of information i must just keep still and do the finding out myself it isn't safe to trust too many people dr rabbit ran downstairs and was starting out into the woods to try to get nearer brushtail's hiding-place when he saw something that made him keep still and watch farmer roe and his boy were coming through the woods toward dr rabbit's tree just as they went past dr rabbit heard farmer roe say yes i'm certain that there is a fox in these woods that was a fox's track we saw in the yard this morning and that was a fox i am sure 
that took the old white hen last night. Our chickens will be in danger until we get rid of him. Do you suppose he hides in these woods in the daytime? asked Farmer Rowe's boy. I shouldn't be surprised, replied Farmer Rowe. In fact, I'm pretty sure he hides close by. There is one thing that puzzles me, however, and that is that although Yappy trailed that fox directly from the chicken yard, he lost the trail right in the woods and could not pick it up again. The fox has played some trick, of course, said Farmer Rowe, and we must try and find out what it is. I really shouldn't be surprised, he went on, if that fox is lying around close enough to see us this minute. We'll just keep watch until we discover his hiding place. End of chapter 6「7 of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Dr. Rabbit informs his friends. Dr. Rabbit did not find out anything more about Brushtail the Fox that day, nor for several days but it was only a very short time until all the little creatures of the big green woods knew that brushtail the fox was around and they were afraid to poke their noses out of their homes stubby woodchuck had seen brushtail three times and he said brushtail certainly did look fierce he looked so fierce he took my appetite away for several hours each time i saw him said stubby woodchuck and i am sure he looks fully as terrible as kai coyote or tom wildcat yes sir we have a very mean and dangerous enemy in mr brushtail and we must keep watch every minute i wish he'd go away and stay away said cheapy chipmunk who was always easily frightened but he doesn't expect to leave at all dr rabbit informed his friends he expects to live here in these woods right along he does exclaimed poor cheapy chipmunk his voice trembling with fear how do you know he expects to live here well explained dr rabbit i have seen quite enough to convince me that brushtail expects to make his home in the big green woods in fact i am in position to know that he has a home here right now it's all fixed up and he's living in it he spends his time there except when he's out hunting us or after one of farmer rowe's nice fat hens where is old brushtail's home stubby woodchuck and cheapy chipmunk demanded in the same breath shh dr rabbit warned his friends don't talk so loud brushtail might be hiding so near he could hear every word you say the fact is i can't tell you any more at present it would not help if i told you more and it might get out so brushtail would hear of it just keep still about what i've said and watch for brushtail every minute you are out in the woods in the meantime whenever i get a chance i will hide in a certain place where i can see him often enough i think to discover what his plans are then when i find out all i can i will slip around quietly and tell you i saw farmer row and his boy passing through our woods this morning stubby woodchuck said i wonder what they were after they were after brushtail dr rabbit explained i heard them talking and i heard them say they were trying to find out where he lives dear me i hope they'll run him away so he'll never come back said cheapy chipmunk with a troubled look they'll probably have to find out first where he lives said dr rabbit and i believe that is going to be pretty hard for them to do but still yappy has a very sharp nose and in time he may find brushtail's den it was dinner time so dr rabbit and stubby woodchuck 
and cheapy chipmunk separated each slipping home as quietly as he could end of chapter seven chapter eight of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain what dr rabbit saw dr rabbit did not see brushtail the fox again for several days then one morning when the sun came up warm and bright and all the little creatures of the big green woods were feeling very happy dr rabbit decided that he would try again he made up his mind to slip over to that thicket where he had last seen brushtail and see what he could discover with his sharp eyes there were a good many briar patches along the way and dr rabbit kept as near these as possible so he was safe even though the way was a little longer you can be very sure too that dr rabbit kept his eyes wide open all the time but he did not see the least sign of brushtail the fox and decided that he was probably somewhere in that dense thicket perhaps thought dr rabbit old brushtail is in there right now eating a chicken he has stolen from farmer row now the very thought of getting any nearer that thicket made dr rabbit tremble with fear still there was a fine big briar patch close to the thicket and dr rabbit decided he would run for this he had hidden in that briar patch several times from various enemies and was familiar with every inch of it he knew he would be safe from brushtail in the briar patch and all brushtail could do if he saw dr rabbit hiding there would be just to wait outside but he would have to give up in the end because dr rabbit never would come out of a briar patch so long as an enemy was waiting for him dr rabbit got all ready and then he ran for that briar patch he ran as hard as he could and dived into the briar patch just as if brushtail were very close behind him because you see it might be that brushtail was very close then dr rabbit crept to the centre of the briar patch and sat down he decided that if necessary he would stay in the briar patch all day and watch he knew brushtail the fox had some kind of a secret in that thicket a den or something else he never would have been so careful about getting into it dr rabbit waited for about two hours and he was already getting tired when all of a sudden he sat as still as a stone in fact he sat so perfectly still that i doubt if you could have seen him even if you had been looking right at him the reason why dr rabbit sat still so quickly was that he saw a movement in the leafy thicket presently the bushes parted and who do you suppose came out no it was not brushtail it was mrs brushtail 
and now dr rabbit knew exactly why brushtail had been so careful about getting into that thicket it was mr and mrs brushtail's home and it was here of course that farmer row's hens were disappearing and this was where dr rabbit and stubby woodchuck and all their friends would go if they didn't watch out yes sir this was where a great many of the little creatures of the big green woods would disappear if mr and mrs brushtail did not leave while dr rabbit was looking at mrs brushtail she yawned showing all of her long sharp teeth although he was safe in the briar patch dr rabbit trembled he was a little too close to old mrs brushtail to feel quite comfortable End of chapter 8「9 of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Mrs. Brushtail gets a hen. Of course, Dr. Rabbit was greatly surprised to see Mrs. Brushtail in the thicket and still after he thought about it he was not so surprised either you see it was spring and just the time of year for mr and mrs brushtail to find themselves a new home if they needed one mrs brushtail stood there looking about in every direction with her sharp eyes then she gave a great spring and landed on the limb of the fallen tree she walked along the limb until she came to the end of it and then jumped as brushtail had done as far out as she could only mrs brushtail did not jump toward the thicket she jumped away from it she stood again looking all around and listening for a minute then trotted away through the woods toward farmer rose and was soon out of sight dr rabbit thought to himself mrs brushtail is going over to the edge of the woods nearest to farmer rose she's going to hide there and see if some foolish hen doesn't come out into the woods to hunt bugs and grasshoppers and he made up his mind that as long as he was safe he would just wait where he was and see if mrs brushtail would come back well he did not have to wait very long as he sat in the briar patch listening he heard a terrible cackling over toward the edge of the woods nearest farmer rose it sounded as if chickens were very much frightened and were running in every direction in a short time dr rabbit saw mrs brushtail coming through the woods and sure enough she had one of farmer rose big white hens in her mouth mrs brushtail held the hen by the neck and after making a wide circle and jumping to one side as far as she could she came to the fallen tree when she looked up at the high limb she seemed puzzled you see 
she could not jump so high with the hen but she was pretty wise she laid the hen upon the trunk of the tree then jumped upon the limb above and reaching down picked up the hen and walked out along the limb toward the leafy thicket then she sprang into the thicket and disappeared how dr rabbit did want to see inside of that thicket and what made him all the more curious was that he heard a number of growls after mrs brushtail disappeared in there and the growls did not sound like mrs brushtail's voice or like brushtail's either yes sir there was something very interesting going on in that thicket and dr rabbit made up his mind he must see what it was if possible he wondered where brushtail was dr rabbit disliked to go any nearer the thicket unless he knew where that sly old fox was but he said to himself likely enough mr brushtail is in the thicket with mrs brushtail and is helping her eat that chicken anyway it's only a little distance to that tree with a hole in the base and a lot of prickly vines around it i'm going to run for it the distance is so short that brushtail would not have time to get me even if he saw me i'll get to the tree and if brushtail should come after me i'll run into the hole at the base of the tree i'll find out about old brushy before he knows it and the first thing they know they will be going out of these woods in a hurry but i must be very very careful i should say i must i must watch every second my how these animals in that thicket do growl it sounds almost as if they were quarrelling end of chapter nine chapter ten of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain brushtail the fox finds some pieces of cheese dr rabbit was just ready to run to the tree with the prickly vines around it when he crouched low and sat very still again he heard somebody coming through the woods pretty soon he saw that it was farmer row the farmer stopped when he got close to the briar patch and muttered to himself every spring i have to rid these woods of a fox or two i guess i'll just put out a little bait for them and see how that will work as soon as dr rabbit heard farmer row coming through the woods he noticed that everything in the thicket grew very quiet i should say it did there was not the least sound in there not a single growl and there farmer row stood within twenty feet of the home of mr and mrs brushtail without ever dreaming of it farmer row had gloves on and he held a number of pieces of cheese on one hand he put several of these pieces of cheese under the fallen tree right near the thicket he placed some more cheese partly under some dead leaves then farmer row went around placing the cheese here and there where he thought the fox would be most likely to find it 
after a time he put the last piece of cheese under an old log then he straightened up and said there now that ought to fix him or both of them if there are two instead of one i'm glad yappy has been trained not to eat anything he finds out in the woods he added for this bait would be the end of him too and that would never do and farmer row walked back through the woods toward his house after a while the sound of his heavy footsteps died away everything in the thicket was perfectly still there was not a sound dr rabbit waited and listened then he heard a movement inside the thicket presently mrs brushtail came out sat down and looked in the direction farmer row had taken while she sat there mr brushtail came trotting up from somewhere out in the woods dr rabbit heard the two talking very rapidly and excitedly but they talked so low he could not understand what they said he wanted very much to know what they said but what interested him still more was that he again heard those growls in the thicket he wondered who it could be since neither brushtail nor mrs brushtail was in there now well after mr and mrs brushtail had talked for a while brushtail went right up to the old dead log where farmer row had placed some of the cheese dr rabbit was delighted for he thought this would be the end of brushtail the fox and we can't blame dr rabbit or think him cruel either for hoping so you see dr rabbit being a doctor knew at once that farmer row had poisoned that cheese yes sir he had put poison in it for mr fox and if mr and mrs brushtail should eat just one of those pieces of cheese it would certainly cause their death but dr rabbit was certainly surprised at what happened brushtail took the piece of cheese carefully in his mouth and carried it to a small hole a little distance away then he hunted around until he found every piece of poisoned cheese farmer row had put out and each time he found a piece of cheese he did just what he did with the first piece he carried it to that hole and dropped it in when he had finished he stood and looked down at all those pieces of cheese then he began scratching leaves and dirt into the hole once in a while he would turn around and look down into the hole and laugh then he would turn his back again and just make the leaves and dirt fly into that hole well he scratched and scratched and scratched until there was not a bit of cheese anywhere to be seen the hole was full of leaves and dirt so you never could have found it mrs brushtail came out and smiled at brushtail and both of them looked at farmer row's house and laughed and laughed but dr rabbit was not pleased i should say he wasn't pleased and he wondered how these two terrible creatures would ever be driven away from the woods and he wondered more than ever who it was that kept growling in the 
they get. End of chapter 10. Chapter 11 of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The growlers come out of the thicket. After Mr. and Mrs. Brushtail had gone back into the thicket, Dr. Rabbit wanted to run home. He surely was uncomfortable so near to Brushtail and Mrs. Brushtail. And still, he thought to himself, since I am here, I'll just stay a little longer and discover all I can. Well, the growling went on for a while in the thicket, and then something happened that certainly surprised Dr rabbit mrs brushtail came out into the open with farmer rose chicken partly eaten and she was followed by four little foxes mrs brushtail dropped the chicken on the ground for the little foxes and then she sprang upon a log and just lay there and watched them mr fox trotted off into the woods again he's probably going after another hen thought dr rabbit or after stubby woodchuck or chatty red squirrel or any of us he can catch and dr rabbit hoped all his little friends would be on the lookout while Mrs. Brushtail lay up on the log and looked on proudly, how the little foxes did pull at that dead chicken and growl. And so there are the growlers I heard in the thicket, Dr. Rabbit thought to himself. Those little foxes might have looked pretty to some people. They were so young and so playful and so funny but they did not look pretty to dr rabbit indeed they did not they looked like four terrible monsters their little eyes snapped like the eyes of terrible little savages and their tiny teeth sharp as needles pulled feathers and sank into the chicken it was certainly true that mrs brushtail was teaching her very small children how to eat chicken and as she lay on the log and watched them she seemed perfectly satisfied with them after the little foxes had growled and pulled at the chicken for a good while brushtail was seen coming through the woods with something in his mouth then suddenly dr rabbit became almost sick with fear he thought for a second that brushtail had caught stubby woodchuck but it proved to be no one but a large and ugly old wood rat that had lately grown so cross and savage that all the little creatures of the big green woods were afraid of him dr rabbit was very glad indeed that it was that particular old wood rat because he had really become dangerous brushtail dropped the wood rat down before the little foxes and how they did begin pooling and biting him mrs brushtail up on the log smiled ever so broadly at this but it was not a pleasing smile to dr rabbit hiding in the briar patch i should say not it was a terrible smile the next instant yappy came tearing through the woods right toward the thicket and dr rabbit had a moment of hope 
but mrs brushtail just uttered one quick low growl and every little fox scurried into the thicket that time dr rabbit had a good view of the inside of the thicket and he saw what became of the foxes they went into a hole under some rocks by a large pawpaw bush so that said dr rabbit to himself is where mr and mrs brushtail and their little brushies have their den brushtail did not run into the thicket with mrs brushtail and the little foxes when he saw yappy coming toward the thicket he ran right toward the excited dog and then hid behind another thicket when yappy came near brushtail sprang right out and away he ran yappy bayed loudly and away he went through the woods after brushtail you see now what brushtail was doing he was leading yappy away from that den of little foxes End of chapter eleven chapter twelve of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain jack rabbit sprains his foot when mrs brushtail and the four little brushies ran into the hole in the thicket and father brushtail ran away through the woods with yappy in hot pursuit dr rabbit decided he had better be going he had discovered a great deal anyway and now he wanted to find some of his friends and tell them about it dr rabbit decided first to go over to the wide prairie and see his friend jack rabbit dr rabbit was not much afraid to cross the wide prairie now that kai coyote was gone and brushtail the fox was busy for the time at least dr rabbit had not been over to see jack rabbit's family for a long time and he was considerably surprised to find jack rabbit laid up with a sprained foot jack rabbit said he had sprained his foot the day before while running from some terrible creature that looked somewhat like kai coyote and just a little like a dog but not exactly like either of them he had a large bushy tail jack rabbit explained and his coat was a reddish brown color he jumped out from behind some bunch grass and came at me so swiftly that i jumped and turned quickly and that was how i sprained my foot he certainly is a fierce and dangerous creature and i wondered if any of the rest of you had seen him jack rabbit concluded indeed we have dr rabbit replied i'll bandage your foot now he continued and then we can talk about this new enemy mrs jack rabbit dr rabbit said looking at her over his gold glasses i'll thank you for that bottle of chloroform liniment i left here some time ago mrs jack rabbit brought out the bottle of liniment and after dr rabbit had bathed jack rabbit's foot with some of the liniment he bandaged it quite snugly that feels fine said jack rabbit getting right up and standing on all four feet i'm so glad you came over doctor that foot feels so good i know i can dance a little jig and jack rabbit started to dance a little but he said ouch right away and everybody laughed even jack rabbit his foot was not quite well enough for dancing then dr rabbit said i told you some of the rest of us had seen that same animal that chased you jack rabbit 
i am sure it was the same animal from the way you describe him it is brushtail the fox he has just lately moved into the big green woods and intends to make his home there right along what makes the matter worse for all of us is that not only has mr brushtail come but he has brought his whole family oh dear me exclaimed mrs jack rabbit i thought one of them was enough but all of them well that makes it pretty serious for us but it might be worse said dr rabbit who always sees the bright side of everything you see he continued four of those foxes are so small that they are harmless besides farmer roe and his boy are on the lookout for that whole fox family and they may get rid of them in a very short time i thought once dr rabbit continued of letting yappy run me right to that thicket where the fox family lives but if i did brushtail or mrs brushtail would surely be right there to lead yappy away off into the woods no if farmer roe or his boy doesn't stumble onto their den i'll have to think up some way myself to get rid of that fox family i'll bring my imagination into play said dr rabbit smilingly and somewhat proudly too what does imagination mean sir little billy rabbit asked wonderingly it means said dr rabbit that you must think and think and think until you think out something quite new then dr rabbit patted all the little rabbits on the head except billy rabbit whom he chucked under the chin as he bade them all a very pleasant good morning keep a sharp lookout and don't worry dr rabbit said with a smile as he left if farmer roe does not get rid of that fox family i'll think out some way myself and he ran like a gray streak right back across the wide prairie toward the big green woods End of chapter twelve chapter thirteen of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain doctoring little thomas woodchuck the next morning quite early dr rabbit received a call to visit a new woodchuck family that had recently moved into the north part of the big green woods dr rabbit told father woodchuck who came over after him that he would be along in a very few moments then he shut the door and began to get ready dr rabbit always dressed with especial care when he was called to a new family he got out his silk hat and brushed it carefully he curled his mustache until it looked just right then he put on his finest pair of gold glasses which he kept laid away for such occasions he looked very handsome i can tell you in his new blue coat his bright red trousers and his finest pair of soft white shoes he surely did dr rabbit was ready he picked up his best medicine case filled with the finest of medicines and started toward the home of the new family of woodchucks when dr rabbit reached the place he found it was one of the youngsters who was sick 
in fact it was thomas woodchuck the pet of the family his name was not just tommy it was thomas and everybody called him that dr rabbit sat down by the bed and said let me see your tongue thomas you see dr rabbit had asked what thomas's name was he always did this it helped the children not to feel afraid of him little thomas woodchuck put out his tongue i see i see that will do thomas said dr rabbit cheerfully your tongue is badly coated your pulse is pretty rapid too then dr rabbit thumped all around over little thomas woodchuck just as the men doctors thump around over little boys and girls when they are sick only dr rabbit did not have to thump so long he could always find out in a hurry what was the trouble dr rabbit looked very wisely over his fine gold glasses at all the rest of the family who were standing about and said mr and mrs woodchuck your son has some stomach trouble from eating too many of those raw peanuts farmer row has stored in his cob house well sir that was exactly the truth they all wondered how dr rabbit knew what thomas had eaten but dr rabbit just had his eyes open and put two and two together he knew the peanuts were in farmer rose cob house because he had taken a few of them himself now and then and then he saw a lot of peanut holes right under the cover of the bed where little thomas woodchuck lay thomas said dr rabbit laughing you must not eat so many of those peanuts why there will be none left for me then little thomas woodchuck and the whole family laughed and they all felt better but dr rabbit gave thomas three big black pills and told him to swallow them all at once thomas did and they were so bitter he tried to spit them out after he had swallowed them but he could not do it of course and so they went right to work curing him you will be quite well to-morrow thomas dr rabbit said cheerfully and the whole woodchuck family breathed easier then mrs woodchuck said doctor i hear two terrible foxes have come into our woods dr rabbit frowned at mrs woodchuck to make her keep still about the foxes near thomas for fear he might be frightened he was always very careful about this when visiting his patients well i must be going good-bye thomas dr rabbit said just as if he had not heard mrs woodchuck then when he was out in the kitchen he whispered very low to father and mother woodchuck yes two terrible foxes have come into the big green woods but i did not want thomas to hear but don't you worry mrs woodchuck dr rabbit went on because he saw how troubled she looked don't you worry a bit i thought of a scheme to get rid of kai coyote and also of tom wildcat 
and if farmer row does not get rid of mr and mrs brushtail i will good morning and dr rabbit slipped out of the door and was gone End of chapter 13「14」of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Listening to the Brushtails. It was a mighty good thing that Dr. Rabbit kept a sharp lookout on his way home from the woodchuck house if he had not been watching he might have run right into mr and mrs brushtail who stood talking behind a large elm tree dr rabbit heard them and saw them at the same time he was so close that he was afraid even to run so he crept noiselessly under a dense leafy thicket near at hand dr rabbit was pretty badly scared because there was not a briar patch anywhere near so he did the safest thing he crouched down on the ground kept still and listened mr and mrs brushtail talking behind the tree never dreamed of course that there was anybody close by listening they talked pretty softly but dr rabbit was so near that he could hear every word they said brushtail was talking yes he said that dog has a very sharp nose and he is bound to find our den sooner or later so i think mrs fox we had better move you and the children clear out of these woods i'll take you to a new den in the woods away off up the river there is not much in the way of rabbits and woodchucks and chickens up there but i'll keep on spending most of my time down here you see i can catch the rabbits and woodchucks and chickens and carry them up to you very well dear said mrs brushtail i think that is an excellent plan when shall we move this very day brushtail said we'll get the young foxes right away and start off with them the sooner we get them out of here the better it will be for all of us mr and mrs brushtail trotted off toward the thicket in which they had their den dr rabbit was still a little scared but he believed he would follow at a distance and see for himself whether mr and mrs brushtail actually did move the little foxes mr and mrs brushtail went into the thicket and in a very short time came out again and sure enough each of them carried a little fox by the back of its neck they walked across the shallow murmuring brook and laid the two little brushies down on the other side in a thicket then they came back and carried the other two little brushies over in the same way as they went past him this last time dr rabbit heard brushtail say to mrs brushtail you can just wait with them in the thicket on the other side of murmuring brook until i carry two of them up the river to the new den when i come back we can carry the other two you see foxes can carry their baby foxes by the back of the neck and not hurt them at all 
Well, Dr. Rabbit was glad and hungry at the same time. He now hurried right over to the nice tender blue grass under the big sycamore tree. There he found Chatty Red Squirrel, Cheepy Chipmunk, and quite a number of his other friends, who all wanted to know at once if Dr. Rabbit had found out anything more about Mr. Fox. Dr. Rabbit did know a great deal, as you know, and he told his friends he would tell them. But he added that he was so hungry he would have to eat while he talked. Dr. Rabbit is a great person to eat grass anyway. It seems as though I can never get enough, he said every now and then. End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Dr. Rabbit tells some good news. Chatty Red Squirrel, Cheepy Chipmunk, and all the rest of dr rabbit's friends who were gathered under the big sycamore tree were certainly very happy when dr rabbit told them that mrs brushtail and all the little brushies were leaving the big green woods for good as the matter stands now dr rabbit said We've nobody but Brushtail to look out for, but he's surely enough. I should say he is, and if Farmer Rowe does not get him soon, I'm going to keep right on thinking of some plan to get him out of here. We can't scare him as we did Tom Wildcat. Brushtail is too cunning for that. He just laugh at us if we painted signs and put them up on our doors no matter what was painted on the signs i heard brushtail tell mrs brushtail that he would not live in that thicket any more he said he would get himself a new den not far off and probably a little nearer to the murmuring brook so you see we could not lead yappy to brushtail now if we wanted to and i am afraid yappy will be a good while in finding brushtail's new den i may find it dr rabbit continued but i'd never risk trying to lead yappy to it and jack rabbit has a sprained foot so he can't but from the way he talked to me i don't think he'd be willing to try it even if his foot weren't sprained possibly suggested chatty red squirrel brushtail will not have a fallen tree near his new den nor any other way of making yappy lose the trail and possibly yappy will smell along old brushtail's trail and find him right in his den don't you ever think Brushtail will be foolish enough to walk straight along the ground to his den? said Dr. Rabbit. He's far too wise for that, no matter where his den is. No, sir, he will make big jumps sideways and walk back on his trail and walk in big circles and, better still, walk for a distance in the murmuring brook ah he'll do a whole lot of things before he goes into his den of course dr rabbit said softly it is possible farmer roe may trap old brushtail i saw him working with a trap only this morning End of chapter fifteen Chapter 16 of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox. 
by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Foolish Old Hen Several days after Dr. Rabbit had talked to his friends under the big sycamore tree, he was hopping along near the edge of the big green woods when he saw Brushtail the fox hiding behind a tree and looking toward Farmer Rowe's house. Dr. Rabbit crept under a big brush pile and looked in the same direction what do you suppose brushtail was watching well he was looking at a big plymouth rock hen coming across the field right toward the place where he lay hidden now if dr rabbit had had something better than a brush pile to hide under he might have made some sort of noise and warned the hen but if he had made the least sound brushtail would have come diving under that brush pile in a second for he isn't afraid of brush piles as he is of briar patches pretty soon the hen reached the woods she stretched up her neck and looked around but not seeing anything she started into the woods for some crickets she had only gone a few steps when brushtail the fox bounded out seized her by the neck and ran off through the big green woods dr rabbit followed along behind going hoppity 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 and presently he saw brushtail splashing along in the murmuring brook he was trotting along in the brook for a distance for you see a hound cannot smell a fox's tracks in the water and so yappy could not track him dr rabbit stopped and looked he saw brushtail finally cross to the other side of the murmuring brook brushtail then turned and looked back to see if anybody was following him he did not see anyone so still holding the dead hen in his mouth he trotted out of sight among the trees of course dr rabbit knew what brushtail was going to do he was going to take that hen up the river to mrs brushtail and the little brushies when brushtail had passed out of sight dr rabbit did not go home at once no he sat down to think he was trying to think out a way to drive brushtail out of the big green woods he sat there and thought ever and ever so long sometimes he thought so hard he scratched his head without knowing it at other times he curled his mustache so he thought and thought but after a long time he said he would have to give it up for this time he was not discouraged for he could tell from the various things he had thought of that something would turn up after a while to help him work out a plan that would get rid of brushtail the fox that was one fine thing about dr rabbit he would not give up he kept right on trying well for the next two days dr rabbit was busy doctoring the little chipmunk children they had crept into farmer rose apple orchard and had eaten a lot of green apples in spite of the fact that mother chipmunk had told jimmy chipmunk her oldest 
that he and the rest of the children should not eat green apples. End of chapter 16、17. Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Dr. Rabbit lays a trap. The day after Dr. Rabbit cured the little chipmunk children, he thought of a new plan for catching Brushtail the Fox. And he decided to try it at once. Dr. Rabbit knew very well that somehow he must drive Brushtail out of the big green woods. None of the little creatures would be safe for a moment until this was done. Yes, cruel, sly old Brushtail must be driven away. And everything depended on our clever Dr. Rabbit. As Dr. Rabbit started hopping along through the woods, he said quietly to himself, Of course, this scheme I have in mind may not work, but it is worth trying anyway. I won't tell any of my friends about it. And then, if I don't catch Brushtail, they won't be disappointed. But if I do catch him, right here, Dr. Rabbit stopped and laughed and laughed. My, he continued, if I do catch him, won't Stubby Woodchuck and Cheapy Chipmunk and all the others be surprised? Well, I should say they will be surprised. And Dr. Rabbit went hopping along, chuckling to himself and feeling mighty fine. He is always happy when he has thought of a plan to get rid of some big, cruel animal. Dr. Rabbit kept going until he came to a part of the big green woods where the murmuring brook was widest and deepest. He knew just what he was looking for, too. You see, Farmer Rose Boy had been setting his fishing lines here every night. Each morning he would pull his lines out of the water, take the fish off, and then leave one or two of the lines lying on the bank until evening. Dr. Rabbit wanted one of these fishing lines, and when he reached the place, sure enough, there was a long, stout fishing line lying right on the ground. There were some hooks on the end of the line, but Dr. Rabbit did not want these, so with his sharp teeth he cut them off. Then he picked up the line and took it some distance away to a big thicket. Here, Dr. Rabbit began making a loop in one end of that fishing line and chuckling as he worked. Well, in just a little while, he had that loop all fixed. Then he spread out the loop, which was made so it would slip. On a nice patch of open ground near the thicket. The other end of the line he hid in the thicket. Then he went over to the edge of the murmuring brook. He moved along the edge of the brook and watched ever so carefully. Now, what do you suppose Dr. Rabbit was looking for this time? Well, sir, he was looking for a live fish. He saw several and made a grab for them, but they all got away. But Dr. Rabbit is very patient, and presently he seized the nice one and carried it, wiggling in his mouth, back to the loop he had made in that line. He dropped the small fish in the center of the loop. 
the fish didn't jump much now it only wiggled and flopped its tail a little and that was just what dr rabbit wanted it to do he ran into the thicket where the other end of the line was and waited for brushtail the fox to come along as dr rabbit waited and listened he heard footsteps approaching he peeped out to see who it was it wasn't brushtail at all it was ray coon and my you should have seen mr coon run for that fish when he saw it hurrah ray coon shouted someone has lost a fish here's my breakfast right here and he was just about to pounce upon the fish when he was almost scared out of his wits by dr rabbit calling out boo let that fish alone neighbor i put it there to catch brushtail the fox come here into the thicket and so ray coon looking rather foolish went into the thicket where dr rabbit was hiding keep right still dr rabbit whispered to his friend i was going to try to catch old brushtail all by myself he continued but now that you have happened along you'd better stay for i may need some help how are you going to catch him dr rabbit ray coon asked and dr rabbit just pointed one foot out toward the loop and the squirming fish then ray coon understood and how he did chuckle he was just as much amused as was dr rabbit and they both laughed and laughed but they had to be very quiet of course because at any minute brushtail might come along suddenly dr rabbit peeked out and whispered shh shh keep as still as anything there comes old brushy now and yes he's coming this way end of chapter seventeen chapter eighteen of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain brushtail the fox is almost caught dr rabbit and ray coon kept perfectly quiet in the thicket and watched brushtail the fox as he came creeping along when he saw the fish lying in that loop my how wide brushtail's eyes did open the fish jumped and squirmed just enough to make brushtail want it very badly he was so delighted that he stood up on his hind legs and danced toward the fish ha ha he laughed it was probably old bull eagle who flew over the woods and dropped his fish <laughs> that's luck for me a fine fish for breakfast and i did not have to get my feet wet to catch it then brushtail began to sing great flying bald eagle caught a fish and flew away to eat him but down it fell through green tree tops and brushy fox will cheat him brushtail finished his song and jumped for the fish he jumped of course right into that loop dr rabbit had made in the stout fishing court well sir just as soon as brushtail's feet touched the ground inside that loop dr rabbit and ray coon jerked the line as quickly and as firmly as they could the loop slipped up and caught brushtail around the body my but he was surprised and scared i should say he was he forgot the fish instantly and he yelled ever so loud let me go although he did not know of course just what it was that had caught him 
the way he yelled and started pulling to get away was so funny that dr rabbit and raccoon laughed until they could scarcely hold the line they wrapped the line around their paws and held on as hard as ever they could and my how brushtail did dig his claws into the ground and pull when he found he couldn't free himself he was more frightened than ever and shouted because you see he could not see what held him you let go of me you old ghost or goblin man you let go of me or i'll claw you to pieces let go of me or i'll come back there and pull all your hair out and i'll throw you in the briar so far you'll never get out and they will stick you for ever and all the time brushtail was talking this he was digging his claws into the ground and pulling with all his might dr rabbit could not have held him alone but ray coon is pretty plump and stout and he helped a great deal but brushtail pulled so hard that he pulled them right out of the thicket before they knew it dr rabbit was so anxious to hold brushtail that he cried right out hold him raccoon hold on to him hold on to him then dr rabbit saw his mistake for when brushtail the fox heard that voice he stopped pulling and turned around quickly when he turned toward them raccoon seized the fish and he and dr rabbit ran for their lives and brushtail was close behind them dr rabbit skipped away as easily as could be and raccoon with the fish in his mouth started up a tree brushtail ran for raccoon and gave a big spring for him he almost got him too for he bit him on the hind foot but raccoon managed to get up on a limb just out of reach brushtail was so angry at losing the fish and being completely fooled that he jumped several times as high as he could but he could not jump quite high enough so raccoon just sat there and ate that fish right before brushtail's eyes this is an extra good fish raccoon called down as he gobbled it up it's extra good brushy but you didn't want it anyway did you <laughs> then old brushtail was angrier than before he pulled the loop off of his body with his teeth and snarled all right for this time you and that big fat rabbit fooled me he's pretty clever but he'll not fool me again and the next time i'll get both of you i'll eat rabbit and coon both at one meal in about three days i'll get both of you and with an angry growl old brushtail the fox went off into the woods after a while dr rabbit ventured out of his hiding-place and hopped over to the tree which raccoon had climbed brushtail has gone off toward the murmuring brook dr rabbit said come on down and let me doctor your foot where he bit you i see it's bleeding a little raccoon came right down and laughed as he said my foot isn't hurt much doctor and it will soon be well if you put some of your yellow salve on it of course it will dr rabbit agreed as he took some salve from his medicine case he bandaged ray's foot in a few minutes but all the time that he was bandaging it he kept a sharp lookout for brushtail he's very sly dr rabbit said and i am certain that right this minute he is planning some scheme to catch us or some of our friends that's so raccoon replied looking at the bushes around him somewhat nervously i do wish he continued that we could think of some plan to get rid of him for good 
then we could live happily and have our fun as we used to do don't you worry neighbor coon dr rabbit chuckled as he picked up his medicine case and looked at ray coon over his big glasses don't you worry he repeated i'll have a plan all in good time and right now i'm going in the direction he went to see what he is up to ray coon seemed a little nervous again as he said well do be careful whatever you do doctor because he looked terribly cruel you remember ha <laughs> ha jolly dr rabbit laughed as he started away waving a paw at ray coon i'll take care of myself never fear and i'll take care of old brushy fox too ha 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 yes i'll see what he's doing now perhaps i shall catch him right away and dr rabbit slipped away in the direction in which brushtail had gone end of chapter eighteen chapter nineteen of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain an exciting chase you remember that dr rabbit started out to find brushtail the fox and watch him well it was not long before brushtail was found and it certainly was exciting for dr rabbit to watch what happened this is the way it happened it was yappy who found brushtail dr rabbit was hopping along looking for brushtail when yappy came tearing through the woods and almost ran into brushtail you see brushtail saw yappy coming but he thought yappy would pass by because he had not as yet smelled the trail these things brushtail always knows but yappy passed so close he smelled fox and then brushtail certainly did have to jump and run dr rabbit just sprang up on the trunk of a fallen tree to watch the race all of a sudden he saw farmer row and his boy running toward yappy and with them was another big dog which joined in the race after brushtail it's a fox a fox it's that old fox shouted farmer row's boy catch him yappy catch him catch him the second big hound turned brushtail back so that he almost ran into farmer row before he saw him farmer row threw a stick at brushtail but missed him catch him yappy catch him shouted farmer row he'll steal all my hens if you don't away they all ran after brushtail the fox farmer row and his boy yelling and both hounds barking my exclaimed dr rabbit as he sat on the fallen tree i certainly do hope they'll catch him and just at that moment it looked as if they would catch brushtail he was in such a great hurry that in trying to jump across a wide ditch in the woods he fell right into it and yappy was almost upon him yappy's got him shouted farmer rose boy yappy's got him but brushtail was not to be caught so easily he sprang out of that hole in a flash and away he ran like the wind as dr rabbit watched brushtail ran out of sight in the woods 
and the barking of the hounds and the voices of farmer row and his boy sounded farther and farther away dr rabbit sat and waited for he thought they might turn brushtail back and run him past the fallen tree but after a while they seemed farther away than ever and he could just barely hear yappy barking on the trail dr rabbit just sat still and waited he knew that brushtail the fox was one of the slyest creatures in the woods and he was pretty sure now that he would get away for this time at least i should not be surprised if he came sneaking back right around here and still dr rabbit said hopefully yappy may get him i'll just wait for a time and see what does happen several times as dr rabbit sat there he heard a noise in the bushes near by and each time he looked quickly in that direction but it must have been the wind blowing the leaves for he did not see anything one time however dr rabbit was really startled a big wood rat ran through some dead leaves and made a great deal of noise he stopped and looked at dr rabbit and asked are you waiting for someone yes dr rabbit replied i'm waiting for brushtail the fox i'm expecting him any time brushtail the fox exclaimed the wood rat well i'm not going to wait for him and he hurried away as fast as he could then dr rabbit heard another noise some creature was creeping through the bushes not far off he was coming nearer too End of chapter 19chapter twenty of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain the big gray goose gets away dr rabbit sat on the trunk of the fallen tree and never moved a muscle as he listened to the animal creeping through the thicket every now and then it would stop and there was not a sound then it would move again and all the time it kept coming nearer and nearer dr rabbit has a way of twitching his nose most of the time but as he sat there he did not even move his nose no sir he was as still as the tree trunk on which he sat he kept his eyes right on the place from which the sounds of the creeping animal came and then his heart gave a thump and beat very fast for out of the thicket came old brushtail himself he looked all about carefully and then sat down panting tired out from his long run but after he was somewhat rested brushtail got up and grinned he looked out in the woods in the direction where yappy and the other hound were still running and barking ha <laughs> ha brushtail chuckled softly they've lost my trail i knew they would when i walked down the murmuring brook well he continued i'll just look around a bit for something to eat perhaps i can find that big fat rabbit 
it happened that brush tail started right for the fallen tree where dr rabbit sat and dr rabbit was just about to spring off and run when something else happened farmer rose big gray goose came near she was eating some tender green grass blades and never dreamed that a fox was near but brushtail saw her and started creeping toward her dr rabbit could not bear to see that big gray goose gobbled up so he shouted as loud as he could look out gray goose brushtail the fox is going to get you he's coming he's coming now as you may know a tame goose cannot fly very far but many of them can fly a short distance and fly fairly high too the great goose was terribly frightened and instantly began flapping her great wings she flew just high enough in the air so that brushtail missed her when he sprang if the murmuring brook had not been near the gray goose would surely have been caught because as i have said she cannot fly very far but as it was she managed to fly across the brook then she came to the ground again and ran screaming and flapping her wings toward farmer rose she got out of the woods in a few moments and brushtail the fox did not catch her now when dr rabbit shouted brushtail turned quickly and saw him but knowing that he could not catch both of them he sprang for the gray goose but brushtail did not swim across the murmuring brook he knew it would take him too long and he saw that he could not catch the gray goose after all so he turned from the edge of the brook and started back after dr rabbit my but brushtail was angry at dr rabbit it was that big fat rabbit that made me miss my dinner snarled brushtail i saw him sitting on that fallen tree it was he who warned that silly goose and brushtail ran swiftly to the fallen tree and darted quickly all around it he sprang into the nearby thickets and charged under some small brush piles in fact he raced around and hunted in every spot where he thought dr rabbit might be hiding and all the time he kept up an angry growl i'll get him i'll get him brushtail kept snarling i'll get that big fat rabbit if it takes me a week End of chapter twenty chapter twenty one of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain brushtail the fox finds the traps a few days after dr rabbit had helped farmer rose big gray goose to escape from brushtail the fox dr rabbit saw something that interested him greatly farmer row was working at something out in the woods there was a briar patch near by so dr rabbit crept into this and watched yes sir farmer row was actually setting a trap or rather he was setting four traps and he was surely arranging things so that if brushtail could ever be fooled at all he could be fooled here or so it seemed at least farmer row had chosen a low place in the woods 
full of the finest white sand he staked the traps and set them in the sand and covered them all over with sand so that they could not be seen then he dragged an old cow's head right in the centre of the four traps now you see it looked just as if some animal had been eating the cow's head and had left it right in that nice fine white sand and if mr fox should happen along it looked as if he might try to go right up to that head then he would be sure to step into one of those traps well all the rest of the day and most of the night dr rabbit watched those traps and that cow's head at last far along in the night he heard a noise in the bushes close by the moon shone very brightly through the trees and on that patch of white sand and the cow's head a dark form came slipping out of the shadows and kept coming nearer pretty soon dr rabbit saw who it was it was brushtail the fox brushtail sniffed toward the cow's head and said well 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 fresh beef this is pretty fine and he began walking around and around that cow's head but he seemed a little suspicious for he did not walk right up to the head still he kept getting closer and closer and then all of a sudden he stumbled over something hello what's this brushtail exclaimed he dug around a little in the sand then said oh ho i see it's a stake i stumbled over and here is a chain and why sure enough there's a trap fastened to the chain ha 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 no beef to-night thank you i'll just wait perhaps some foolish animal will drag that head away and hide it then i'll just help myself sooner or later i'll get that head and brushtail trotted away but he did not go far until he stopped and sniffed again in the direction of the cow's head my exclaimed brushtail that meat certainly does smell good so good that i am almost tempted to go back and try it but i'm afraid i'll just wait as i said and i'll get that cow's head as sure as anything and laughing to himself because he believed he was so clever brushtail stole softly away into the woods well brushtail is clever but some one else was just a bit cleverer and that was dr rabbit End of chapter 21
Dr. Rabbit hurried right over to Jack Rabbit's, told him what his plan was, and brought Jack Rabbit back with him. Then Dr. Rabbit hurried around through the big green woods, telling his friends. He told Stubby Woodchuck, Cheepy Chipmunk, Chatty Red Squirrel, Frisky Gray Squirrel, Robin the Red, Old Possum, Busy Blue Jay, Jim Crow, and quite a number of others. He asked them all to come about the middle of the forenoon to the place where Farmer Rowe had placed the cow's head, as he would need every one of them at about that time. Immediately, Dr. Rabbit and Jack Rabbit hurried away toward Farmer Rowe's back lot. They squeezed under a board fence and began looking for something. Here it is, Dr. Rabbit said, picking up a stout piece of rope that had been part of a clothes line. I knew it was in here somewhere, Jack Rabbit said, for I saw it just yesterday. Now, said dr rabbit let's go back to the woods and find that slim hickory tree that has a grapevine hanging from the top they ran into the woods and after a little search found the hickory they hid the rope they had found and hurried over to the cow's head in the sand there they found all the other little creatures after a great deal of careful work dr rabbit jack rabbit and opossum managed to get the cow's head outside the circle of traps then every one of dr rabbit's friends helped to pull and push the cow's head it was a queer procession after quite a while they succeeded in pushing and pulling the cow's head to the slim hickory tree Dr. Rabbit told them now to push it into a nearby thicket, and they did. Fat Opossum exclaimed, Phew! I'm tired. Now let's eat the head. Everybody but Opossum laughed at that, and Dr. Rabbit said, No, Brother Possum, not just yet, but you are helping wonderfully and tomorrow morning i think you can have this head all to yourself i think we'll be rid of brushtail the fox by that time dr rabbit now grabbed hold of the grapevine that hung from the top of the hickory and he and all his friends pulled and pulled until they bent the top of the hickory down to the thicket then while his friends held the tree top down Dr. Rabbit made a snare or loop of the rope he had found and arranged it in the thicket so that if Brushtail got to the cow's head, he would have to step through the snare or slip noose. Finally, Dr. Rabbit tied the tree rather loosely to a small twig of the thicket and told his friends to step back carefully because the least thing would make the tree fly up as it was before and take that snare with it. End of chapter 22 Chapter 23 of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Brushtail the Fox Discovers the Cow's Head Dr. Rabbit and all his friends stood back and watched to see whether the tree would fly back, but it did not. It held as firm and quiet as could be. Now, said Dr. Rabbit, old brushy will come back to where that head was and seeing it gone he will naturally think that old possum or somebody has dragged it away so brushtail will smell along the ground where we have dragged the head and he will finally find it right here i have hidden the noose in the thicket so that mr fox will not notice it and he'll walk right in to get that head 
in doing so he'll put his head through that noose and pull on it trying to get to the head well when mr brushtail pulls he'll break that slender twig that holds the tree down because that tree is about ready to break as it is then we'll see what happens let's hurry away now dr rabbit added if foxy brushtail happened to see all of us here at once he might become suspicious i'll come back soon and watch and if anything happens i'll let all of you know at once so away went stubby woodchuck and old possum and all the others talking quietly yet excitedly and now and then laughing a little they said they hoped brushtail would come soon and they also said that something just told them away down deep in their hearts that brushtail was surely going to be caught this time and all that day they could scarcely eat they were so eager to know whether brushtail would get caught in that noose in the thicket dr rabbit hid not far from the cow's head and waited all day then he went to supper and came quickly back pretty soon night came and the big round moon came up along about midnight dr rabbit heard a sound pit-a-pat 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 someone was coming along slowly through the woods then as the form came nearer dr rabbit saw brushtail the fox trotting along with his sharp nose to the ground smelling the trail where that cow's head had been dragged well sir brushtail went right up to the thicket where the noose was then he laughed and laughed and laughed well 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 said brushtail i guess i'm just a little too smart for anybody around these woods ha 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 it's just as i thought that silly old fat possum or somebody has been foolish enough to walk right in among the traps that and drag that head up here well i'll just go on into this thicket and bring that head out and take charge of it myself there's enough meat to last me several days and brushtail started into the thicket End of chapter twenty three chapter twenty four of dr rabbit and brushtail the fox by thomas clark hinkle this librivox recording is in the public domain what happened to brushtail the fox when brushtail the fox started into the thicket to get the cow's head he never dreamed of course that there was anything there to catch him so he plunged right into the thicket swish up went that tall slim hickory tree and brushtail with it you never heard such a yell as brushtail gave he yelled so loudly that all the little creatures of the big green woods were awakened and dr rabbit did not have to call them they all came running toward the place where the snare had been set even jack rabbit away out in the wide prairie heard brushtail yell and here came jack rabbit running as fast as he could in a little time all the little creatures of the big green woods were there now you see brushtail had put his front legs through that noose so that it held him around the body just behind his fore legs the rope did not hurt him much although it pulled considerably so he dangled up there and howled 
while all the little creatures below shouted and danced for joy of course when brushtail saw all the little creatures come so quickly he knew a trick had been played upon him but he was too badly scared to be angry i should say he was he was about scared out of his wits when that tree jerked him up into the air and he was about as badly scared now as ever because he could not see how he was ever going to get down from there let me down let me down let me down brushtail shouted clawing wildly at the air oh yes said dr rabbit i suppose we'll let you down foxy brushy i suppose we know what you would do to us mighty quick if you caught us yes it's likely we'll let you down ha 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 and dr rabbit and all his friends danced around under the tree and laughed and laughed i'll go out of these woods and never 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 come back if you'll just let me down brushtail promised and he really meant it this was just what dr rabbit was waiting to hear brushtail say but dr rabbit said we'll go over to my house for a little while and talk the matter over and with brushtail begging them to come back and let him down they all hurried over to dr rabbit's house in the big tree when they were inside dr rabbit seated them all in his best chairs then he stood up and said my friends i just wanted to have you all come over here and stay until morning the fact is that while brushtail is pretty badly scared he is not hurt much yet and we must hurt him at least a little or he may forget his promise and come back to our woods by morning however i think he will have learned a lesson he will never forget and i think he'll keep out so they talked and had a good time at dr rabbit's until morning it was just daylight when they went back to the slim hickory brushtail was still hanging there and when he saw them how he did yell to be let down very well brother brushy dr rabbit said we'll let you down and if you ever come back into our woods again oh yelled brushtail before dr rabbit could say another word i'll never 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 come back if i can get down i'd rather live on crickets and bugs all my life than to take chances but brushtail did not say any more because he wanted to get down right away oh possum said dr rabbit if you'll go up and gnaw that rope in two so that old brushtail can drop to the ground you may have that cow's head all for yourself i'll do that old possum said and he began climbing the tree presently old possum was above brushtail and began gnawing the rope oh dear me shouted brushtail after old possum had gnawed for a while it's an awfully long way to the ground i'm afraid and then old possum got the rope gnawed right in two plunk brushtail struck the ground well sir he got right up and started to run he was so stiff he could not run well at first but the farther he went the faster he ran after he got across the murmuring brook he went away through the woods on the other side like a streak i don't know of anything that could have scared brushtail and made him stay scared as that snare did brushtail the fox never came around the big green woods after that dr rabbit and his friends were certainly glad and happy End of chapter twenty four
End of Dr. Rabbit and Brushtail the Fox by Thomas Clark Hinkle